I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on-demand horror movies. Each week, my co-hosts Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, and Dave Dreyer, and I, will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm good. I'm on one of the higher levels, so I got a double portion of spaghetti today. Double portion of spaghetti. You're not smelling gas. You're not smelling gas. No gas, right? right. No, but I'm pretty carved up. So give me time to react. There you go. There you go. Well, we all know where it's all going to go. So I I promised. I promised I was going to quit doing that. I just can't help myself. Mm. Make statements that no one can tell what the hell I'm talking about. Yes, it will all become clear. (laughs) I promise you. All right. Also joining us this week is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl. Crystal, how you doing? Well, obviously, <laughs> I'm stuck in the house, <laughs> like everyone else. Yeah, obviously. All right, so, uh, so obviously. we're so so we're not laughing because she's stuck in the house. <laughs> we're laughing because of the oh, word yeah. obviously. <laughs> And again, <laughs> that will become clear. So don't get it. You know, there's no, it's it's okay. Calm down. We're not making fun of Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> They're stuck in the house too, so yeah, we are. No, no one's getting out. Yeah, of we this. are too. <laughs> yes, uh, we're we still are in rec- quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. As we're recording this, we, uh, if you're listening to this later on, we are, oh, gosh, buried under the quarantines and whatnots for the coronavirus as it's sweeping across the the nation. And oh gosh, North Carolina is one way, Iowa is another, but it's all. It's all crazy. It's all unprecedented. We don't. We have no idea what in the world's happening. <laughs> it is crazy, right? It's crazy times. When you sit back and think about it, it's like, is this really happening? It's wild, wild. Um, mm. Yeah, the last time something this scope happened was what 19, somewhere between nineteen eighteen and nineteen twenty. Yeah, right? nineteen eighteen yeah. flew up. Yeah, so, yeah and it uh, it did something similar. You know, theaters closed for us who like cinema and. Yeah, although I think what we're doing this go around is trying to prevent the results of what happened there. And then what it was um 200 years before that was the plague, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a mm-hmm. yeah, I guess we I guess we do this every once in a while. Mm. We don't do it. The we, viruses do. The virus. <laughs> the viruses do it. All right. Well, it's not my uh, fault. They're doing uh, it too. <laughs> well, one thing we can do while we're all in our homes, uh, what was it? Social distancing. That's the word for 2020. Social distancing. We can watch horror films on uh, various streaming. So, so uh, like, like putting like just, just two people on the floor of a building or just two people in a house, in a room in a house? Mm. Like that? Oh, oh God. I'm wow. Sorry. Wow. Well, you know, isn't that weird? There are a lot of parallels between these two movies we're reviewing tonight. That is yes. true. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what movies are we doing? Let's go ahead and share that with our audience. We are doing The Room from director Christian Volkman. Uh, this is playing on Shudder. And no, this is not The Room that everybody knows that is like one of the worst movies ever. You know, oh, oh hi, Mark. <laughs> right. No, no, it's not that one. <laughs> It's entirely different. Yeah, there's plenty to talk about with that. Again, on Shutter right now. Uh, the second film is called The Platform from director Galder. I'm going to try this. I, I was. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Gastilo Eurusia? Eurusia. No, I don't think I did that right. Gastilo Eurusia. I don't think I did that. But Gastilo Eurusia. Galder, Galder, we were going to say good things about you, so I hope you forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this film is currently available on Netflix, and each of these films are surprisingly good, if I do say so myself, and have, as Crystal was alluding to, have uh, some coincidental parallels with our lives at the moment in a, an interesting and disturbing way. So this is going to be an, an incredible, fun episode. I, I just wish my brother Dave was here. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, yeah, he is not. Hanging out with us tonight. He'll be back soon as as things start ironing out. He'll be, he will return. Believe you me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how threatening. That's how threatening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's going to come back if I have anything to say with it. Well, 
we'll get to that. All right. First up is The Room from Christian Volkman. It is cast includes Olga Kirilenko, Kevin <laughs> Jansen's <laughs> laugh at me. Go ahead. Joshua Wilson. <laughs> and it's currently on Shutter. The synopsis goes, Matt and Kate buy an, uh, an isolated house. While moving, they discover a strange room that grants them unlimited number of material wishes. But since Kate has had two miscarriages, what they miss most is a child. I didn't realize they gave that much away. And uh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, and, and it's even in the trailer yet. Still, I was surprised by it. Go figure. <laughs> All right. So let's find out what the crew think of the room. What are your first impressions? Jeff Moore, you're up first, sir. I love how when you say names, they just kind of slur yeah, <laughs> from beginning to end. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I uh, totally understand. Totally understand. <laughs> oh, one of, these, one of these days I'll get it all straight. And, well, Before we get yeah. started, we have some familiar faces in this. Olga Kurilenko Thank you. was Bye. also the female lead in Quantum of Solace, James mm-hmm. Bond movie from, what, 10, 12 years ago? And was the lead in Mara, which we covered in episode 35 of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Mm, nice. And we kind of liked it, if I remember right. And Kevin Jansen's, did he look familiar to you, Doc? You know, he did, but I could not place him. But I think you're going to tell me, and I'm going to be incredibly surprised. He was the male lead in Revenge. Yes, I am surprised. Because uh, <laughs> he, he was awesome wow. in that. And we uh, covered that on episode 21 of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. So these these folks were familiar, and I didn't recognize them either. I had to look them up. But I, I just remember thinking that name is familiar. I know I've heard that before. So I thought that they did a real good job of slowly developing the story and the pacing. And so we get to know a lot about Kate and Matt and their relationship where they're, they're, they're trying to get a new start. And boy, this is an isolated big house. And, you know, there's some good friendly joking and things they're doing while they're unpacking, but there's a little tension too, because apparently Matt is an artist who sometimes gets lost in his work or, or, or whatever. And then we do learn about kind of later about the, the miscarriages. So they find this room. Matt finds the room, actually. He sees some light or something through a hole and tears some covering off this wall. And here's this big steel door with this intricate, weird lock that he has finds the key to. And he opens this door and goes in. And just by chance, he's drinking a bottle of whiskey and says, damn, I wish I, wish I had another bottle of whiskey. And boom, there's another bottle of whiskey there. And so they find out this room will give them anything they ask for. So from that point on, the doors open, they go into this hedonistic thing. And, and so they, they kind of carry that through. So first they ask for all kinds of stuff and they overdo it. And then they kind of settle down and then they ask, uh, you know, they pretty much spoiled it in the beginning. So she asks for a baby and she gets a baby. That's when he kind of goes, wait a minute. He he was the one that led her into it. And now, now he's trying to back off and she's going whole hog into it. Kate. And wow, I, I don't know what else to say because I, I don't want to give things away, but I do know that at with about 20, 25 minutes left in the movie, the pace picks up and it just starts going crazy. And there's some stuff that happens that at first it was very confusing. And then all of a sudden, you know, my, my slow light dawned and I went, holy crap. And then they carried on from there. So I really enjoyed this and i think it it kind of reminded me and i know this isn't the right quote there's a there's a quote something to the effect of those whom the gods would destroy they drive mad and the version i've heard of that is those whom the gods would destroy they give to them everything they want and that's what was happening here so that's what i was thinking almost from the very beginning because it was something I heard a lot from a friend of mine and you see the degeneration of their relationship. And then 
I just thought it was interesting that he was kind of the pusher at the beginning. And then once she got hooked, he kind of backed off and went, wait a minute, this isn't right. You know, <laughs> what's going on? He, especially at the baby, he drew the line. So I don't know. I'm going to stop there. But I enjoyed it. And I thought, you know, any qualms I had about it were satisfied once it, you know, that last 20, 25 minutes when it picked up and took off and got really, really uh, WTF. What can I say? <laughs> Yeah, that that's that, that's a Jeff movie right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was there, the WTF factor. Yeah, was there. All right, well, let's find out what Crystal thought. Crystal, what is your first impression of The Room? I loved this movie. I felt like the cinematography was excellent. I think the acting was perfect, pretty much from everyone. And even when you have like the in and out of characters, I feel like it was really well done. I feel like the story was very cohesive. And even though there are some WTF moments, they all completely made sense as to why it happened and how mm-hmm. the story progressed. I really loved the concept. And shockingly, with as much as you ca- you knew, actually, I, I knew one thing that was going to happen, but I didn't know it completely. But I was like, even still, I found myself surprised at moments. The ending was great, too. I liked the way it wrapped it all up, came together. I think it was fun at times and really cute. It's it's a creative story. And I think it was told well. And I found the characters very likable, the ones that should be. And the ones maybe that shouldn't weren't mm. as well. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I think they did an excellent job of explaining everything all the way through. And yeah, I, like I said, I loved it. I, I really, really liked this movie. And I think it had a, a lot to it. It was a lot of story, but it, it didn't feel overwhelming. No, it didn't. It didn't. I think they handled the exposition necessary efficiently and quickly. And they had a couple of characters that would do it for us. And then some things, you know, they showed us and, and never told us. And, and, you know, we had to follow that. And sometimes they would show us and then we would know and then they would come back around and tell us. That that may have been the only flaw to what you're talking about, but that's a minor, minor, minor nitpick. They did have a character that was kind of Captain that Exposition. There's a character oh, yeah. named John John Doe. <laughs> now, John Doe is, yeah, the, the, the house has a history and they find out that there was a, a murder and that the, you know, an unknown person named John Doe murdered the family there and and he's been incarcerated in a, asylum for 40 years and he you know he does come up to you know give us some behind the scenes information to kind of pull everything together and and i but i do think that was handled incredibly well because it it provided menace at the same time which was Mm -hmm. useful it it, you know it had more purpose than just exposition is a tough thing for a lot of uh, films to get it you know it's an easy thing to stumble over i think you're getting the impression that i like this film (laughs) <laughs> which i did oh you didn't okay no i know I, I, I did like, i did like this film i'd be I surprised if someone didn't like this one yeah. honestly it's very i yeah i had a great time with it i i wasn't sure going into it you know because i put it on the schedule take it off schedule put it on schedule i was like oh man do we really want to see the room and wow it blew me away it caught my attention quick and like you said they when when they're learning about you know, the powers of the room and, and wishing for all these things, you know, the difference between a thousand dollars and a million, you know, it, it's fun. It, you know, you're with them. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's what I would do. And then as you learn to, you know, but you know, it back in your head, <laughs> there's some consequences here. You guys aren't thinking this through. Come on. So, you know, there's gotta be, you know, there's gotta be some take when you do all this give. And that, and that's true. But for me, for me, Jeff, I was thinking more monkey's paw. But maybe, oh. maybe, you know what I mean? Because, you know, because yeah. everything they wish for, you know, that comes with a, uh, with a, with a little bit of a, a hook, sometimes more than others. Right. And I loved how they revealed that with the money. Oh, yeah. Well, see, yeah. I think they yeah. just handled, I think, I think they thought about it all wrong and they thought way too small because is it a hook? It's only a hook if you, do well, one thing. Do one well, thing. Well, yeah. Well, at least at least one thing. <laughs> we don't know what other. Yeah. Of course, you know, he was worried. But I, what I loved was Matt was worried. Well, it's going to give something away. But he was worried more about 
you know, somebody coming in there and saying, I want a dragon. And now you got a dragon flying around the house, which I thought was funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But is it flying around the house? Yeah. Well, or there's a the room. I mean, there's so much. See, they thought small compared to someone else. Well, there's another character named Shane <laughs> that ends up in the house. And uh, we won't say anything else more about him. Now, Shane, there's a map that he uncovers on the wall that he doesn't, nobody ever explains. But Matt can't figure it out. But Shane does. And when, when Shane figures out that map, he uses the the room in an incredibly different way, which I found enormously fascinating. I was just like, yes. wow, this yes. is That's so awesome. cool. This is so cool. It's taking what was a reasonably entertaining theme and just ramping it up to 100. It was amazing. I thought it was what a great idea. And the way they handled it was small enough to, you know, not cripple us as as an audience <laughs> trying to figure out what was going on. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yes, yeah, so I love this film. I loved it. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job telling that story and, you know, ramping that up. Yeah, but I also love that what they wished for was true to the characters, right? Because yes, yes, uh, Matt is an artist. So what does he want? He wants all these famous paintings. Oh, I and, loved that. That was uh, my favorite. I was like, ah, oh, yes, that would be so would, awesome. Right? But you know what I love too is, be, you know, as soon as it started happening, I was like, okay, the question is, does it take or does it create? But we actually had that answered with the snow globe. It creates. It doesn't take. Just so you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it created a whole... Remember when the snow globe broke? The broken one was still existed. While oh, it yeah, yeah, it did, yeah, it didn't replace it. Right, right. Yeah, so it was. It creates instead of taking from the world. To So I thought that was kind of cool because I was curious about that. I was like, once again, you have the whole like, is it doing harm or damage outside of itself? Really, it's a self-contained kind of entity. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why it can do that. And that's part of the spoil, you know, spoiler, <laughs> so we can't say. But, uh, yeah, so I was wondering, all right, you know, he, he's he got that Van Gogh. Does that mean who owned the Van Gogh suddenly goes in their right. room and it's not there anymore? Or, you know, you know, you go to the museum and it's gone? And that's not the case. So it does. It does duplicate, replicates things. Mm-hmm. It just creates things. Yeah. So and, and, and the snow globe is the perfect explanation of it, which they that's the only explanation we get about that. We really but it worked. It was enough, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you're like, oh, what? And it's like, it, I, I do love that because that was a very like headhunter move for me that they showed it instead of like telling, you know, mm-hmm. because they could have just had a completed snow globe and not had the old one there. And then you'd go, oh. Yeah, it didn't transport stuff. Right. That's what I was. But, they, but I love that they, you know, they went for caviar and expensive champagne and they got clothes and all this stuff. Cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> It, I, I thought it took them surprisingly long to figure out the the restrictions, though. Yeah. You know? Really? I don't well, know. I think. Does it take it a couple sense. days before they, when they have gone and you know outside? Well, we before. don't know how much partying yeah. they Would did. Would you have left the room? Right. No, That's they right. were doing cocaine and all kinds of stuff. They were like, they were whooping it up. I also think it makes sense because I think that it, the room could be a little bit of an addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, so them not oh, leaving makes sense to me, you know, until they kind of had to. I mean, they didn't even have to go out for food or anything. They had to do not. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to leave at all. Right. I mean, it's like you want food. There it is. You want money. There it is. You want diamonds, whatever. The clothing. Oh, that's so fun. Mm-hmm. So, so fun. I like that he had in the ice and the ice bucket was full of diamonds. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. ice in the ice bucket. Yep. <laughs> That was actually one of my favorites. Actually, I was like, "But this would this might cut her." <laughs> pretty, pretty sharp. <laughs> it's so silly. Yeah, there was a lot of good to this movie. Uh, yeah, but that but I think all what we're talking about here is you know that's why the movie works. Is you yes, we can all relate to that. You know, no matter how extravagant it is, you know, we can put in our in place whatever extravagant needs we want. But it's representational in you know, broader terms and it, it really works. And they're having such a good time. You, you know, you're having a good time along with them because you're, you're thinking as they're wishing for that, you know, what would I wish for? I'd wish for this and I wish for that. And yeah. 
She asked uh, for a thousand dollars, and you're going, "Oh, come on!" You know <laughs> that well, ramps yes. up pretty. Quick. It's so small, he has to go look for it, right? Because it's like yeah. <laughs> literally ten one hundred dollar bills, and he's got to go. And he was like, "Because he's got so much stuff in there, he has to figure out where it ended up." <laughs> yeah, so that I think all the way through, because this goes from zero to you know two hundred miles an hour over the course of the movie, mm-hmm. in terms of what the rooms used for. And I thought they just did a great job of stepping it up to not go too far past what you could and and have it feel like oh that's cool without thinking about oh well now they can do this you know and and that is still a surprise at the next step so and i hope that doesn't spoil it for anybody but well there's yeah. one let's let's talk about the main conflict now as far as the story goes and that's you know the introduction of the child um that's you know that's when it moves from I would say from the first act into the second. And that's an important conflict, right? Because it is, it's, it's a conflict bigger than, you know, what do you do with all the money? It's okay. Now you've wished for a child and what, you know, what does that mean? And, and, uh, you know, they talk about trying to wish it back or what to do with it and stuff like that. You know, there's all kinds of things, but my question to you, Crystal is, do you agree with, are you on Matt's side here or Kate's side? She's insane for wishing for a child. Okay. I think that's absolutely going that. Oh God. I but you like, can, but you can understand why she did, right? No, there's adoption. I'll never understand that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair I enough. mean, I mean, I guess I just, I just think it's a, it's a very selfish thing to do, honestly. And I think about it from the perspective of, is it even real? I mean, yeah, they're having all this fun amongst themselves and doing this and that. And that's great because they're just partying or whatever. But the moment you bring a child into it, much like, you know, real life. Oh, what are you doing? I just, oh, that's so scary to me. There's plenty of children out there that need love. Didn't have to be their own child. Well, know, their I, own I, biological I, child. Even, even is it? No. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Uh, but I, but I did sort of get, you know, apparently that was a big thing. They both had really, really wanted a child and they had tried a couple of times and she had miscarried or, or even stillborn. I don't remember if they say exactly why she says two, two, we tried twice and they're dead. We have two dead babies or something like that. So he's the one that brings it up again, wanting right. to do it the natural way. And she freaks out. Right. Now, I get that. I totally am with her on that part. Like, she doesn't want to try again because she can't go through the pain. That, right. I'm with her. Absolutely, I'm with her. And I think that's where the light dawned on her. And that's, you know, that we have this thing that will give us whatever we want. So. But wouldn't you, would, wouldn't, well, maybe, see, I think we watch too many horror movies, guys. Because yeah, yeah, for we, us, well, I mean, I'm like, well, no way. Because yeah, the solution for her Especially no. when, you know, you know, being high from, you know, wishing for everything already, you know, it's right there in front of her face. It's one, you know, down the hall, right? All the answers yeah. are right there and at the, past and, that door. And so Matt's the one that had the reaction you're having, Crystal, yeah. it seemed like to me. So regardless, it's a very interesting conflict yes. that poses so much moral, you know, twistiness to it, you know. Okay. <laughs> the, now, after it's done, though, after it's done, of course, that becomes a different matter. You know, I mean, now that it's done, it's like I I wouldn't have been able to wish the child away. You know, what I mean, because mm-hmm. then it just seems too real. So I I don't know. I went back and forth. I understood them both, honestly. Mm-hmm. But and I think that's why this is so good because you get why they did it. Honestly, I mean, mm-hmm. like I said, I watch too many horror movies. There is never that would never happen for me. But I get why they did it, and I get why he reacted the way he did. I get to. Re- I get the way she reacted. I get why he stopped her that one time. He's like, oh, God. It's so, it's interesting. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a, it's selfish versus they do love each other so much. I think it's mm-hmm. they have such a good relationship, honestly. Yeah. You know, they, they it, seem to get along well and love each other. Oh, it, it definitely strength. creates it a big strength. conflict, yeah. though, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Now, now you tack on to that the consequences, right? They, yeah. you know, you know, what you can and cannot do with these things that you wish for. And what does, you know, what does it, what do you have to sacrifice to, to keep those things? And that changes, you know, Matt knows and Kate doesn't know yet. 
and Matt, you know, of course, Matt is just that, that's a terrifying realization, right? And, yeah. you know, what, what does he say? How does he say it? And, you know, she finds out before he can figure that out. And that's, it's rather a horrific circumstance that, you know, what do you do and how do you manage this and without also going completely bonkers? I kind of like that they did the, without getting too much into it, but some of the repercussions of what happens with the baby that they did most of that without too much CGI. In the, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. With, with good cuts and edits and, and things, you know, of course, you're oh, like at the end, but. That was shocking to me too, Jeff. Like, I feel like that was so great because I was like, that wasn't what I expected at all. I think that was Ooh. brilliant. It was so. Yeah, it isn't. I, I, <laughs> I, it changed my perception of, of what happened when you, you know, what happened to the money and, and that kind of stuff. I thought it was a Van Gogh. Yes, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was, it was like, a straight oh. connection, not a not a process. <laughs> right, me too. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. That The writer is really yeah. smart. Yep. And then they just, like you said, they kept ramping it up every time they do it. You know, it wasn't, this film was just full of twists. It just kept twisting as it went along and, and ramping things up and really digging into you know, what the full extent of this was, what the full meaning behind that was. And, and it, yeah, I'm, I'm being very vague because I don't want to spoil things, but by the right, time, right, right, by, right, the, right. by the time, you know, some, it, it all goes kind of South and in, inside that room, it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane what they accomplish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> it but, is. But without crazy special effects, like you said, you know, it's all very subtle for the most part. I mean, there's, there's some particular parts where they had to, and then, but it was done really well. But other times, like you said, you know, it's just done with cuts and, and editing and, and uh, cinematography. And it's, Oh my God. Is it, it's awesome. Yes. I think it would be cool actually to, to know more about the room itself, like how the, it came to be, what exactly is it, you know, cause it's just such a cool thing on its own. Yeah, yeah, you know the cables and all this craziness. It's just such a weird thing on its own. I'm like, I don't know. It's just a, it, this movie is just good. Yeah, I love how they reveal that because you know they know the first thing that happens is that the electricity blinks. You can always tell when something's getting lit yes. because the electricity blinks, and he calls an electrician, and the electrician sees this crazy thing in the basement and goes, I have no idea what that is. And <laughs> I, um, I don't know if I can fix that for you. And, um, but it does, it has all these very, very sci-fi ish kind of wires everywhere. And um, as he starts digging in the house more, literally sometimes, you know, he starts finding them throughout the house and, and you start learning the scope of things. And yeah, I, I thought the electrician, I, I expected a bigger reaction. <laughs> If you think about that, well, what yeah, they, you know, what they usually it? walk into, <laughs> and you go, "Whoa!" He should have like almost faded or something from all those that big jumble of wires and that weird uh, was that an octagon? I think. I don't know. I don't know. But his character was. was so funny because, yeah, like, when yeah, he's yeah. leaving, he's like, he's like, yeah, you know what? What happened? Oh wait, no one told you they were murdered here. Like, he's totally <laughs> nonchalant about everything. I think his character was like a little bit of comic relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree because well, I thought he was supposed to be like they were supposedly called the power company, and I'm like, that ain't a power company truck. <laughs> 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 yeah, just be the whole pickup. Yeah. But electrician, yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought he was fun. He was uh he was sort of nonchalant about the whole thing. It was kind of like, "Oh, wow. I've never seen anything like that before." It's like, "Yeah, not in this world or any century." <laughs> no, I, I told you. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> yeah, that's when we that's when we learn about the past. It, literally that way we learn as well. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score, and favorite scene for the room. Jeff, you are up first, sir. I think this is, uh, you know, one of those. This deserves a good score because it's uh, a, a good story, a very well told story, very well acted. We talked about the cinematography, how they the staged reveals that keep you guessing or keep surprising me anyway 
So I'm giving this a four. Nice. Mm -hmm. And my favorite scene (laughs) is going to be when the power, when they go on the base wheel with the power. (laughs) (laughs) Because I was just like, holy crap. Anyway, it was great. (laughs) <laughs> it was great. All right, Crystal, you're up next. What is your final thoughts, your score, and favorite scene for The Room? I definitely say watch this movie. I think I think definitely more people are going to like it than not. Some, it's not going to be for everyone because, you know, it is still a little wild. But I'm also giving it a four. I, I, I kind of went back and forth between that mm-hmm. and even a little bit higher. That's how much I liked it. Oh, it's wow. like, yeah, this will probably make my top ten, I would think. Oh, nice. Like, nice. Yeah. Nice. And God, there's a lot of scenes I really liked, but I've got it. I got to go with it because it was so cringy and so gross. But hey, mom, don't worry. I saw you two do it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yep, yep, that's all. Mm-hmm. That was my second choice. So <laughs> yeah, I just have to go with what really uh, messed me up, and that was it. Yep that that was that was pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't stop there either. So, no. Oh. And 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 the end. I know the end. Might even no, suggest. No, 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 Well, I, we'll have to talk off Phil. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Don't you dare!" That's no, the not good. No, you can't do that. All right. For me, I love this movie as well. I, like I said, I was not expecting to even really want to watch this, and it caught my attention. It kept my attention and it wowed me at every turn. I thoroughly liked the acting from our leads. They were really fantastic. And they, they had a unique relationship that, you know, felt honest because, you know, they, the events were, you know, pulling them apart and sometimes it was pushing, you know, pulling them back together. Right. So it was uh, well done, well written, very smart, very, uh, very well written. And, yeah, I'm 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 going to give it a four as well, and I do I I guess the only reason I don't want to give it more is is I'm, I'm not sure it went far enough to wow me completely, right? It's like they played it safe, yeah, 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 played it safe, right? So that yeah, that's that's a good way to say it. I mean, it it thematically it doesn't, but. You know, some of the choices could, you know, the, there's so much more potential there. And that's not a downer. And, I, you know, I'm not saying again, it's because four is a very strong. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, and it's also highly recommended. I would, will it be in my top 10? You know, certainly is in the realm to be there. Uh, we'll see if it holds on. Who knows this year, right? Uh, yeah. Favorite scene. I'm going to go with the snowman. Hmm. You oh to, yeah. You have yeah, to yeah. watch the film. And the reason why is because it says so much with so little, right? There's it it reveals that Shane knows a lot more about this than they do and he read it off that map and I mean it just takes what was at 10 and puts it straight to 100, just ramps it up immediately. It also, um, the fact that it was only snowing in a small circle was interesting. And of course, it meant something, right, to the character. It, 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 it was true to Shane, this character Shane, and what he would want inside this room if he could do this, and, which was entirely different and, in a lot of ways, more innocent than, you know, what Kate and Matt would, did inside the room, right? It, it just means so much with just one quick presentation of, you know, this, this snowman out in the middle of the woods being, you know, played with for the kids. So, yep. and it, it, there's so many other things I could choose, right. you know, from the Van Gogh painting at the doorstep to the dollar I know, bills. That was one I almost uh, showed. Yeah. It's so uh, cool. I love that he hung it back on. The- that's- yeah. I, I, that yeah. Cool. And that it, that it hung straight and didn't, <laughs> I was like, how did you get that thing to hang straight? <laughs> but yeah, there, there's there's so many surprises in here that you could go with. Really, really a fun movie. It is. And that is our review of The Room. It's playing on Shudder right now, so you can check it out, because we know you have Shudder, and you can let us know what you think of it. All right, the second film we are going to review is called The Platform, also known as El Hoyo. Uh, this is from director Galder. We'll try this name again. <laughs> Am I, do I do I like slow down? Right. All right. Gastulu Urutia. That's still not right. But it might be closer. 
I'm not going to tell who the cast is because I'm not going to be able to pronounce any of them. <laughs> it is playing on Netflix right now. And it came to my attention because people started talking about it. Now it's starting to get some buzz and they're saying how messed up it is and how it, you know, is uh, relevant to our, the times. And I said, well, okay, I need to check this out. I sent it to, to uh, you, you um, Jeff. And I said, Hey, do we want to do this? And I think we both watched it and we both went, yep, yep, yep. No. The synopsis is as follows. Inside a vertical prison, inmates are assigned to a level and forced to ration food from a platform that moves between the floors. The platform is a twisted social allegory about mankind at its darkest and hungriest. So a little, add a little bit to that is that each floor only has two prisoners. And the food it, you know, starts at zero where there are no prisoners. It just basically is just filled with everything you can imagine um, and everything that they ask for. So every prisoner gets to say what one food they want, and that food will be on that platform. And then as it goes from floor to floor, it spends, uh, I never could get a bead on how long it stays on a floor, but it's Maybe a minute. It It, didn't seem like long. Yeah, it's not a long amount of time, but long enough. (laughs) A couple minutes, yeah. And then it it goes through, you know, there's basically in the middle of all these, the, the cells is a big hole. And it just zooms up and down this hole. You know, there's no explanation on how it works or anything and doesn't need it. Uh, We'll get to all that. And basically, by the time you get so many floors down, well, the food's all gone. And you can't keep any of it. You you have to put whatever you don't eat back onto the platform or you suffer consequences. And it has a lot to say. Uh, We follow one character. His name is Goring, right? Goring. Goring. Yep. Well, we'll get into the details with him, but he's he's basically we follow him from cell to cell because every thirty days they move you, and you can move up or you can move down, and uh, you basically we were alluding to this at the pre-show. Where, you know, you get they they start smelling gas and they know they're going to go to sleep and wake up on another floor, and uh, the consequences of that is amazing. It's shocking and scary. All right, let's find out what we thought of this particular film called The Platform on Netflix right now. Crystal, you are up first. Okay, so I knew nothing about this film going in. And these people that are in this place, um, they're all there for different reasons. The lead, I don't know why the heck he would be in this freaking Yeah. Pit because he w- apparently wanted to quit smoking and wanted a diploma. So when he spent six months there, after spending six months there, he will get a diploma, which is just mind blowing to me that he is in this place. And apparently he really doesn't know much about what it is or what happens there. But shortly after he wakes up there with his roommate, his roommate schools him rather quickly, takes him a little time to, what, I don't I don't remember what floors he was on. I should have written this down, but takes him a little bit of time to get with the program. But as you're further away from the top floor, obviously you can understand that there's no food in the lower floor. So people die. Lots of people die, apparently, from a certain floor level down. And his roommate has been playing this game longer than him. And he is in this place because he did something not good. He's a, he's definitely crazy. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely crazy. But our lead kind of starts this descent into madness a bit himself. The woman that actually, I guess, enlists him or puts him into this place or helps him get into this place is also also becomes one of the I guess prisoners but it's not I mean is it even prison? Right because it's a mixture yeah it's a mixture of prisoners and people who volunteer for you know reasons whatever they have and her story her story is interesting because she uh, she did not know what was happening and she worked there 25 years she said and when she found out what happened she made it she basically made it her cause to go in and change how it was working from the inside right. out. Yeah. I mean, and each person gets to bring one thing with them. 
Yes, that's important. Yes. Yes. And and what I was going to say about her is she's absolutely insane for bringing a damn dog with her. Stupid. I I have no respect for it. She's so stupid. Uh, So there was some parts, some some bits and some writing that I had issues with. Okay, because of things like that, because I'm like, really? Mm." Well, she was troubled to begin with and bringing her comfort dog made perfect sense for that kind of character, I thought. I it's just, not the right decision, but it does speak to, you know, people go everywhere with, you know, these comfort animals now, you know, these support animals. Yeah, it, it very much speaks into <laughs> what we're living in right now. Yeah. I mean, just the world we're living in, really, how selfish people are, how people would not give, would not do without to give other to others. It's really actually a sad commentary. And as long as you look at it, I think from that perspective, I think you'll like it a lot more because honestly, there were some issues. I had some issues with the story and some things that happened and some of the way it happened. But looking at it as a social commentary, it's a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I can forgive some of this stuff because some of the stuff that happens is absolutely- Bonkers, man, bonkers. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. But overall, I, I liked this movie because it's 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 wild. It kept me entertained. I mean, I never knew where it was going to go for sure. I still don't completely understand the ending, but that's irrelevant. You know, I mean, yeah, overall, like I said, it was, it was shot well. The acting was great. I think the characters were sufficiently weird and creepy and good at the same time. and concept is wacky so so you're not entirely certain what the message was <laughs> there's a reason why i'm saying that no i i know yeah. i'm with you the ending kind of goes what, what? but but, it, what? but i kind of loved it for that so yeah so goring uh his his one item is a book which is fascinating Donkey yeah which is incredibly fascinating because mm-hmm. trimagasi his his first roommate Brings a knife, this self sharpening knife with a great story that goes along with it. Another roommate, another, yeah, yeah. Another roommate wishes for, you know, brings a rope, which makes sense, right? But other people, I know, I don't know if you know, it's like one person had a, uh, a surfboard. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Do some people not understand? Right? See, or a samurai like sword. Some samurai understood. sword kind of makes sense. Oh, the samurai was yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, but some people seem to know what they were getting into. And the others were just clueless. Right. So wild. Yeah. But the book actually suggests something far different than what everybody was interpreting it, it's, which is, you know, really digs deep into subtext for allegory and whatnot. So it's interesting. I love this movie. I had no idea as well what I was getting into. The concept just, I was like, I don't get this concept, but everybody's talking about it. I'll watch it. And Again, here's the second case. I was sucked in immediately with these two guys, uh, Goring and Trimagasi, and their uh, their banter back and forth was funny and handled all the exposition in in a really interesting way. And it was funny because he kept saying "obviously," and he said, <laughs> "Yeah, oh okay. yeah, I, I forgot about obviously." <laughs> so I, yeah, no, it was, it was so funny, <laughs> and you know how that relationship changed when the floors change and how. Trimagasi, he had like he was there for twelve months, and he was in his last couple months, right? He had two more months left, so all he had to do was survive that one last month, and he would have been free. And he had a plan. He was he was funny. He was delightful. He he basically, you know, because it, it, with him, he illustrates very quickly the nature of you know the people above and the people below. And we quickly get in line to what's going on here. And to the, even to the point where, you know, if he, if, you know, he pees down and he goes, well, why are you peeing on them? Cause the guys above me are going to pee on me. Anyway, which in context of the movie makes perfect sense. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I could see that. <laughs> and it's very interesting how this all plays out. And then they add some, some mixes, you know, some things into the mix, right? Goring is, is pretty, even though he has to do some things to survive, he's pretty adamant on his moral set, right? Which is interesting. The conflict mm-hmm. within him is is incredibly interesting. Then we get this one lady, 
uh, this Asian lady who rides the platform all the every month, right? Looking for her child because apparently her child is in here, and they see her over and over again writing it down, and she has to deal with the most atrocious stuff in her journey. And it's interesting how she and Goring create a bond that is still, you know, she sees something different in him than everybody else she has to deal with. And, and that's, that's incredibly interesting as well. And another thing that's interesting, and then I'll shut up and let you guys talk is we don't know for the longest time, how many floors there are. Right. Right. And when you start thinking about, you know, how much further can it go and what happens, that's a frightening concept. And it's so frightening. They actually show us eventually, and that, and it delivers on what what yeah, <laughs> it, it delivers. It yes. delivers in in frightening, horrifying ways. So, Jeff, what was your uh, first first impression of the platform? I, I like this a lot too, and it it intrigued me right away with the concept. I, how realistic is the concept? Yeah, not, but it's an interesting setup. I guess, or an environment to put this in, and especially with what's going on now. So, yeah, you have these, like, uh, gourmet chefs creating this massive feast on this table. Every day. And then it, every day, and and the, uh, the, you know, the head chef is very demanding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. every, everything is correct and properly staged and everything, and there's just food piled all over this. And supposedly, it's supposed to be an that if people divvied it up, it'd be enough food for everybody. I'm not sure once we find out how many levels there are that that's true, but at any rate, it starts out, the top is, is level zero, and then it goes down, you know, approximately two minutes at a time as it goes down. And it's obvious by the first time they're in the, the 40s, and it, it's a mess uh, already. And I think we find out fairly early on that it has at least 132 levels because Trimagasi has been to level 132. Mm-hmm. And that, I, I don't know, I, I love the whole thing. So the people at the top gorge themselves because more than likely they've been at one of the lower levels and there wasn't any food left. So they know they got to get what they can while they can. And so the farther down it goes, those people get hardly anything. And, and so then they have to resort to other methods and it kind of fits into that thing I said before about, you know, the, the whom the gods would destroy, they give to them everything they want. Apparently the people in the upper levels can't handle it after a while because they've got so much food that now there's no, nothing to, there's no fight. There's no dilemma. There's no conflict and, and a fair amount of those kill themselves. And there's, inmates kill each other and it's just goes on and on. But I thought that whole idea of, you know, talking about we're peeing on them because next time they'll be above us and they'll pee on us. Right. You know, the shit rolls downhill at the opening. There's a, there's a voiceover that says there's three kinds of people. Those at the top, those at the bottom and the ones moving down. And, and, you know, it's a perfect metaphor, I think for, uh, a lot of the perceptions that go on with earnings gap, right? Wages gap, financial gaps, whatever. you got all these people at the top with tons of stuff, and they could give a shit about the people at the bottom, and they're not going to do anything to help them because they're going get, to get what they can. And Are there a few people that would help them if they could? Yes, but they can't do anything because there's too many levels in between them. And then when the one guy with the rope, he's trying to get somebody to help him up, he gets all the way up to a certain level and... Uh, you know, he wants them to help him up, but nobody will help him. You know, all they got to do is pull him up the rope, but nope, they're not going to do that. And then with the idea they come up with at the end, I thought was interesting too. And, and it has the, uh, the same, it has predictable reactions and results, I guess, from the people at the other levels. So I don't know. I'm trying to keep from, from spoiling too much as we go. I love the woman that rides down. The only reason we know she's looking for her boy is because that's what Trimagasi tells Gore, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know. He talks to her, but she never talks back right. to him. Uh, but but because he befriends her, then later on she befriends him, which has turned out to be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, very <laughs> well, important. 
So, yeah, I, I just, all the way through this, I was, I liked the ideas and the different ways they came up to, to play with the concept. And every one of them, I thought, had uh, a bit of a, some symbolism or metaphor behind it that, that uh, compared to what the haves and the have-nots in, in the world and, and not really caring, you know. People are dying. Yeah, that's okay. But what do we know? And then the admin woman who worked for 25 years and never knew what was going on. Very. And she, and she at the end, was the screener. So anyway, I don't know how much I, – I don't know how far to go because I'm not sure. I, I love the concept. The, the, the table or platform just moves down. It, it's like a magic hoverboard. Yeah, yeah it's fascinating. <laughs> it, it, it slides oh, yeah. seamlessly down into oh, place so that they can How eat I at the table. I not realize that, Jeff. I didn't realize that. Oh, my God. I feel so stupid right What's now. Oh. What? <laughs> it's not on any. How does it work? How does it work? And then oh, after it's here for two minutes, the alarm goes off and it goes down to the next floor. <laughs> and this, there's this long row of... It's visually interesting because the floor is like, well, I don't know, two or three feet thick, and so is the platform. And so you, as you look down the hole, you see this long perspective, right, of holes going Or when down you look up. Oh, distance. my gosh. Yes. And, and dodge whatever might be falling mm. <laughs> down. And then when it goes back up, I didn't get that the first time, what was going on. But after it goes all the way to the bottom... Then it shoots back to the top, and you better not be leaning over looking when that happens. Yeah, it's gonna take you take your head off. So anyway, I, I I just enjoyed the, I guess the social economic commentary of the of the situation and how they how it was dealt with. Yeah, especially when Imiguri shows up as mm-hmm. the second inmate, and she wants to change everything, and she has you know she's even you know she basically makes two plates and she's trying to convince. The people below to make two plate, you know, eat, eat the two plates, then f- make two more plates, and and try to con- you know, and try to socialize everything, right? Try to create a society. Right, right. She's she's that person in society, right? She's the, the the advocate, right? Right. And it just does not bode well for her. But she also, at the same time, recognizes something in Goring, and ends up kind of putting him into a, kind of a messiah position which i found which i found very interesting and she she tries over and over and over with the same spiel and after like two weeks he just gets tired of it and jumps in yeah he gets (laughs) i love it when (laughs) she she does not like that but it worked right but that's not how she wanted to do it she wanted to convince him yeah and then barat or barat uh who's his next roommate he, you know, he's crushed when it, when they won't let the rope thing happen, and then he, I love yeah. that dude though. But, yeah. God, yeah, he's I did cool. too. I did too. <laughs> he also helps scoring, you know, with his messiah complex. He builds to that complex as well, and then supports him as they go and try a different way to convince everybody. And that, to me, that's when this really kicked into gear. I was already enjoying it, but when they go down the platform together, and you know, because they can. You're not stuck to the room. If you can get up, you can get up. If you can go down, you want it, you can go down, right? You can do whatever you want. You just can't leave. You just right. can't take the food off and leave it on your thing because they'll freeze you or heat you up depending on what they feel like. So it, I love the idea that, you know, they're going down trying to convince everybody that, you know, uh, what they're trying to do is basically ration the food and how they go about it and how people react to it. And it's different, right? Yeah. It's different. It's not always the same. Yep. It's Sometimes it's very similar. I, it was very, very well thought out and fascinating. Yeah, and that's that's why I thought it was a lot, you know, and without too much of a stretch, it's a lot like society in that you try to set up systems that will help, and some people take advantage of it and screw other people, and other people are trying to be community activists, and, you know, it, it, some are accepting, some aren't, and why at the same time, the idea of the rope, you know, that you pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Well, some people will throw you a rope and help you up, but sometimes they cut it off in midstream mm-hmm. without much thought of what that does to you. So the whole thing was, uh, I, I just thought really interesting considering 
the state of the world exactly as we saw it. I don't know what, it, you know, if I had seen this like two months ago, I'm not sure it would have carried oh, really? as much oh, weight. Oh, interesting. Interesting. But it would have, I mean, because I think it's it still carries forth, but considering, you know, the runs on on health supplies and things going on during this virus, it just sounds similar to the people gorging on the food at the top, eating way more than they need. Yeah, buying all right. the toilet paper, by golly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what do you think, Crystal, uh, of all the gore? I usually ask Dave this question, but there's lots of gore. And oh. you love a good gory movie as well. I love gore. I don't think there, I don't th- think there was that much. There was a little bit. It felt like there was just a little bit to me, but <laughs> see, <laughs> see, to me, like they barely even showed. Okay. So first and foremost, I should say there might be some triggers for people on, in this movie. Um, there are some racist remarks and there is some harming of a doji. And that, I think that's, I think, I think that's going to trigger but, more than what happens to the girl when she gets pulled off the platform, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think people worry more about the dog, but I mean, you barely get to see the dog. You just see some entrails and stuff. It's not, but I think what they did was good. I mean, there was, there was some blood, there was some stuff. I wish we could have seen more like when he was cutting Pete. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Another trigger could be cannibalism. cannibalism. Yeah. That might really bother. So yeah, I was like, Whoa, big one here. I, I wish we could have seen more when he started cutting him and stuff. I think that would, I think that's the part that's really tough for me because being the idea of being strapped down and then someone just cutting pieces off of you to eat is cutting slices off. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty gross. He had a plan though Bastard. too. He said, "I can't, I can't just cut you to pieces because you'll rot before I can eat you." <laughs> yeah. It's like holy crap! <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. Doc is, Doc is so delighted. By oh my that. god! <laughs> well, and then you know what? We found that to be true. Because yes, we did. Yes, we did. There was another body that was there and had maggots all over. I think they did a good job on that. We have some. Like we maggots. have some uh, decap- burned bodies, I I, which I assume. Yeah. Yeah, decapitation yeah, sure. and a and a and a cut in half body. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was some fun gore for sure, but I mean, it could they they. I don't think it was like super blatant. It, it's not that. It's not too much in your face, you know. It's sort yeah. of uh, a quick cut kind of thing. You don't even the dog. You don't get a lot of. Uh, you just kind of see the aftermath. Yeah, so that's good. And, and, which is yeah. enough. To trigger, yeah. just saying. Yeah. Yes. Oh, of absolutely. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Of course. The idea of it. Sometimes the idea of it's worse, you know, because your mind can go in all kinds of ways. But what what I don't understand, though, is, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be giving too much away. That's why I'm afraid to say too much. But I love that he and his roommate get together and decide to go on this crusade. It is a were. crusade. Mm-hmm. It literally is. Yeah. yeah. yeah it is. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah. They go on this crusade to, you know, try to change the way everything is going. And then what they find, I don't understand the end. That's, that's, that's. It, and it, does, it, it doesn't honest. entirely make sense on how that could even happen. But you kind of, at this point, you just got to go with, you know, you kind of, you okay. kind of got to give it up. Yeah. Because well, I agree with you because by the time they got down there and found what they find, there's no way that would be there. Oh, I know. I just wish there was a little bit more context to this. I, I I feel like it was very abstract. And is is the message just selfishness, just what's happening? I don't understand. I mean, because there was enough message throughout the whole movie. But the ending message I didn't get. That's what's confusing to me. I, it doesn't really matter. Well, they were going to try that. The idea is that they, you know, he, the, the one guy wanted to get to the top, but the only way to get to the top was go all the way down to the bottom and write it back up. That, that was the sell. But along the way, he sold them on the bigger picture, change everybody along the way. And he really got into it along with Goring, right? To the point that, you know, Goring is, you know, he's, he's a Christ figure almost at this point, right? And when you get to the bottom, they want to send a message to the people that put stuff on the platform. Right. Mm -hmm. And change them instead, which, you know, we have no idea, you know, because they they have a couple different ideas on what that message should be. And then we don't (laughs) we don't get any resolution to that. But I think that's the point. There's a futility there that I think they were trying to express. 
but I love the ending. I love the vagueness. I love the, you know, did it succeed? Did it not? And, you know, it's all up to us to figure it all out. And who knows? You know, it, it hasn't been written yet. So much like this one. I would love to know what they, what they intended. What the, the writers, the people with the behind it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was a cheat. I don't think they didn't do it because they couldn't figure it no, out. No. I think they, they had something in mind. Right. Oh, I do too. Right. This is this is a far too complex and interesting story, I think, to just leave the ending open like that. I think they absolutely knew what they were doing. It's just I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, I I don't really care. I didn't know how that could happen, but I thought it was pretty cool. And I I have to go back and look now. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, I'm thinking um Mm-hmm. I'd like to watch this one again. So I, real quick, I, I want to um, talk about the four leads that we go to. We got Ivan. I'm going to try the names. I didn't earlier. I'm going to try them now. Ivan uh, Massagu. Uh, and hold on a second. He was in uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Was he? Oh, okay. Wow. He played El Tarta. El Tarta? I have no idea. I mean, I've yeah. seen that movie, but I couldn't tell you who was who. But he played Goring, and he's our lead, and he is incredible. I Yeah was drawn to him and his, his plight, his innocence at first and his transformation to I'll do what I need to when I have to, but otherwise I'm going to stick to my morals to Messiah to, you know, whatever he actually ends up becoming at the end. I love uh, Zorian Aguero, 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 I don't know, Zorian, sorry. He plays Trimagasi. He is so funny. Yeah, and he's so creepy. When he tells that story about the knife, it is, it, it it's it just captures your attention, and he is creepy. Antonio San Juan plays Imaguri, and that's the lady that comes in there and wants to change everything. And Emilio Boale plays Barat, and that's the last roommate that he has that goes on his. Uh, what did you call it? You called it a uh, crusade. Yes. Crusade, yes, crusade yes. is exactly what it is. And there's a few others, but those are the main ones. And I don't know what the character's name was for the girl that rides up and down, and there's nothing to you know lead me there. It may be the Sierra Liana plays Molly. That may be her, but I can't tell you for sure. But whoever she was, she was she was really good too. And she doesn't have any dialogue, but the scenes that she in when she uh, interacts with Goring are pretty telling of uh, a lot of different types of emotions, conflicting emotions in that. Well, something I found interesting though is. Why would that woman tell him this story about her? You know, like what was, I guess I was confused as to the truth behind the whole thing, because she said, no, she didn't come here looking for a child or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I didn't like that lady. I didn't like her at all. Just did not like her character. I felt like she was confusing. I felt like she was stupid. I felt she, like she was a stupid idealist and didn't have the first clue of how to deal with people, which is very upsetting when you go in and try to change something and you bring a freaking innocent. And then yet she's saying, no, that woman wanted to be what, like Asian Marilyn Monroe or something. Yeah. It was really weird. It was weird. Yeah. 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 yeah but she was, she was an idealist that didn't have any clue on how to fix things, which says a lot, which yeah. is what Jeff is talking about. Right. Well, and she was an idealist. You, you realize it was even more than that. It's like an idealist who is not will, not really wanting to do something herself. She wants someone else to do it for her. That's why she was depending on him so much. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Waka waka. It's, it's, yeah, waka waka. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our final thoughts, our score and favorite scene for, wow, the platform. Let's do it. Crystal, you're up first. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I really like this movie. I think people will have mixed reactions to it, but I think overall, I think it's definitely worth the watch. It's it's a fascinating tale. Uh, I'm giving it a 3.75. Okay. And, I don't know, there's a few there's a few scenes I really liked, but I, I've got to go with, with the beheading. It's one of my oh, favorites. nice! I didn't yeah. expect that. Good, good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere, too. That was a fun fight. So, yeah, that was. It was. It was kind of so deflating, though. You're like, oh my gosh, no, you guys have made it so far. Oh God, I thought I was like, oh great, it's over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, sir, what are your final thoughts? Your score, favorite scene for the platform? 
I think this is worth a watch, and I don't think, I don't know, almost the way that they were, what the food looked like, the way they were eating it was almost more disturbing than the gore. You know? <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, I know. Was, I agree. And stepping uh, on it. Ugh, oh, and peeing on it. And, Ooh, yeah. Uh, and, and other things. Uh, so, yeah, I I think this is well worth a watch i enjoyed the way they explored all these things and i like what you guys are saying about the sort of the 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 crusade and i i'm gonna watch this again and uh take a closer look at it but i'm giving this a four and another one and i think you know just because i'm a sucker for uh that that kind of stuff the, the the uh the social commentary i guess and my favorite scene my favorite scene is going to be when the first time we meet the Asian woman who writes the table ah. down after they're done on their level on, on Goring and uh, Trimagasi's and it goes down to the next level and you see the guys attack her and oh my God, that <laughs> Goring is like, oh, oh, what am I going to do? He's screaming and yelling and like, stop it, stop it. What are you guys doing? And then. They, they go out of view in the corner of the room and you, you hear some noises and then she comes crawling back up on the second. You realize it. she just killed them both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just thought, oh, that's awesome. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, yes, that was a good one. Somebody not to be trifled with. Right, exactly. Yeah, she, she, was, she was chaos. Chaos on a, on a platform. All right, I, this, this movie spoke to me. I love this movie. I loved it from the characters to... The the whole idea, the concept, the the way they delivered it, uh, the conversations between these people, which you know was a, a variety of ideals, you know, from you know each each of one of his roommates and himself, going, you know, they all had different mm-hmm. ideals on how to not only survive but how to either influence or decide not to influence. Uh, in in the case of Trimagasi, everybody else wants to do some kind of change that he ends up with. It's a, it's a second film in a row when I watched it after I watched The Room that we covered earlier. To, uh, you know, it just like it had me. It, it, it grabbed me and I watched the entire thing, not even thinking about anything else. I was totally focused oh. on this movie and it had my attention the entire way and I really loved it. I'm giving it a four and a half. I love oh. this film. Whoa. I nice. love this film. And I really like our lead. I thought he was great. And I love, yeah, I, I'll just repeat myself. It, it just really spoke to me. My favorite scene there, there's a, there's probably a half a dozen I could pick, even after you guys pick two. But my favorite scene is when he wakes up on the lower floor with Trimagasi, and he's and he's all tied up. Trimagasi woke up first, and it that alone is frightening. But that's not the most frightening thing for me. That happens now. There is something that he, that is more frightening that happens after my example, but in that immediate time, is when we start hearing everybody else wake up. Right, and you oh, hear them, and you hear them screaming, and then they start dropping. Yes, yeah. and they're falling through the floors, and you get this one really great shot, looking up all these floors, and they're on like one seventy something. It's like you know, like you know, you hear that he's on like one thirty something, and then they wake up on one seventy something. So you know, it's just like, holy crap, what does that mean, right? And mm. they have this great shot looking up the the platform space, and you see, you know goes feels like it goes for infinity and you just see this body falling right toward the camera and to me those screams were the most haunting thing in here it it was just like the realization that people were giving up in that instant <sighs> you know how that crushes people and makes them do this and that really got me there's a lot of scenes like that, I think, of, of uh, frustration and hopelessness. Uh, before we get off of this, the actress that played the uh, woman that rode the, the table down, her name is Alexandra Masenke. Really? Or Masenke. Okay. Yeah, it's the one, the one listed as Maharu. I just, I just searched her, and that's who she is. I okay, think. perfect. Yeah, because I, I couldn't tell you what her name was. or And, there's no and I assume the little girl was Molly. Ah! Or Molly. Okay. Anyway, so that's our review of the platform, <laughs> also known as El Hoyo, and it is currently playing on Netflix. So uh, you are easily able to check it out, and you can let us know what you think. And to let us know is easy. All you need to do is write us at 
Feedback at gruesomemagazine.com is the is one way. You can go to our Facebook group and leave some notes there, or you can go to gruesomemagazine.com and leave some notes on the uh, posting for this podcast on the show notes. So we any way you want to do it, we want to hear from you. Another thing you can do is to help us out is to share the podcast. Doesn't cost you a thing. Just let other people know. Share it on uh, social media. Share it on Facebook, which is social media. Share it any way you can. Tell your friends. (laughs) <laughs> or uh, leave a review on iTunes. Just let people know about this podcast so uh, we can share this more and more with people. All right. That's that's about it. I want to thank you, Jeff, and I want to thank you, Crystal, for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. Yes, absolutely. Wow, good good picks. What was that? <laughs> crackle, crackle, crackle. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm like sore throat. Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. no, no, no. no. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Too, too soon. soon. All right. Well, <laughs> with that, let's all say good night. Good night. Good night. Obviously. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>